You could argue that there are a certain set of ingredients that make up a great songwriter. Universal appeal, longevity, relevance, a signature style, a creative voice. Tom Petty has every one of those ingredients and can lay claim to being one of the finest songwriters of our time. Sometimes the song can come so fast that you're, you're suspicious of where it came from. Songwriting is just one of the things we explored with Tom Petty when I sat down with him recently in California for a feature interview at a recording studio near his house. This year you received the ASCAP, American Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers Founders Award. Did that mean a lot to you as a songwriter? Um, because it was from my peers, um, it was quite nice. I think when you start to get older, those things mean more than they did when we were young, you know, where we used to just blow it off or laugh at it. It's quite nice, but it's nothing to aspire to. Together with his mates in the Heartbreakers, Tom Petty has authored some of the most recognizable songs of the last four decades. Those aren't just hit singles, they're valid entries into the American songwriting canon. It's kind of a dangerous business looking really deeply into what, you know, the germ that creates songs. I don't like to stare at that light very long. I get a little superstitious about it, but... Like you'll lose your... Mojo well, it is, there's some kind of actual magic going on there. I feel like for some reason I was born with some kind of conduit to this, you know, this energy force or whatever it is. And I can have that happen through me if I really try to do it or sometimes when I'm not, when mm -hmm. I'm just standing somewhere. At the funniest times, uh, something can come into your head and you think, that's a good line. In that process, Tom Petty has taken home three Grammys and has earned a well-deserved spot in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's admired by critics, millions of fans, and most importantly, by his peers. Bob Dylan calls him a masterful poet. Petty and the Heartbreakers have earned the right to dial it back and just tour the oldies. But now, as throughout his entire career, Tom Petty continues to take the less obvious path. There has to be new. You know, that's the thing, there has to be new. If you want to keep this music alive, you want to keep any music alive, there's got to be new stuff to keep it moving, to keep it moving forward. That new stuff is Hypnotic Eye, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers' 13th studio album. So new it currently exists only for the ear, not the eye, so have a listen. Well, I feel like a forgotten man like the snarl had come back into the music. Snarly indeed. After a pair of bluesy albums in the last decade, Hypnotic Eye has the seasoned veterans invoking the spirit of rock and roll with a vigor and passion reminiscent of their earliest days. I really wanted a groove more than anything, you know. I, I just wanted the bass and drums to to really groove. I want the groove to be good on everything and that's missing from a lot of people that still try to do the rock and roll I think is 
the rhythm section is so important, you know, it must be, it must create a, almost a trance, you know, between mm -hmm. the bass drums and the rhythm instruments. And that's easy to say and hard to do, it's not so easy. I guess our, our opinion of this is if we're going to do this as old men, then we should probably bring some level of sophistication to the table, like we've gotten better at this, and there's actually a reason for us to do it. Are you old men? Well, we ain't young, you know. I ain't ready to call it a day, but, you know, I ain't 20 either, you know. One of the songs that I mentioned before the interview that I absolutely love on this new record, All You Can Carry, um, in the chorus, this is from Hypnotic Eye, you sing, take, take what you can, all you can carry, take what you can and leave the past behind. What does that mean to you? What's some of the past that you would draw? Oh, God, we'd be here all day. I mean, uh, <laughs> Give me one example. Know, well, there's just so many, you know, there's so many painful things that we all go through in life. Mm -hmm. uh, and they become you know, they become a load that's, that you carry around and until you learn to kind of just, I think it's about forgiveness maybe, mm. like, you know, that being a really important word yeah. and part of learning how to be a good person and how to be happy is that when you forgive those things, you can, you can drop that load and move forward. You, so you, maybe there's something even that deep in the sun. Well, my mama's so sad, daddy's just mad, cause I ain't gonna have the chance he had. It's not just musically edgy, its lyrics are razor sharp, full of undertones of lost opportunity and corruption by elites. It's a fist shaker, you might say, at the 1%, that the American dream is fading for the wider population. I got a dream I wanna fight till I get it. I did live the American dream. I am a complete recipient of that, that great gift. I've done an album about how that gift really isn't attainable anymore and why and what and hmm. what are the problems. You know, I'm more interested in why are we becoming less human? You know, why are we not maybe just as nice as we used to be. Does that make you sad? Yeah. But I don't want to be the old guy screaming, hey, it used to be better. You know, it, it didn't necessarily used to be better. But you have to, uh, you have to find that. What, what worries me now is I see more and more of that people that will do something for their own gain without really caring who it hurts. Yeah. Injustice has always outraged Tom Petty. One record executive once said he had anger beyond just teenage rebellion, which in rock music you'd think is good fuel for the creative fire, usually. <laughs> but you, you don't like, do you... You seem to not like it when people get too li literal about your lyrics, right? I mean, you, you famously said that your hit song, Won't Back Down, was almost too, too literal for your liking. Very naked. Yeah. A very naked song. Maybe it still What's makes wrong me with that? uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know if I like being read that easily. But um, sometimes that happens, you know? I did feel, I immediately felt second thoughts about that song because it was there was just nothing to hide behind in it it was there's no metaphor there's 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 nothing in it but just very straightforward stuff but that's the way it came out and there was something about it that sounded truthful to me I Won't Back Down could be Tom Petty's anthem. He famously declared bankruptcy to get out of an onerous record contract, a victory that set a precedent for future musicians. Then he rebelled when the record company wanted to raise the price of his next album by a buck. 
and his record The Last DJ, released in 2002, was replete with songs that pretty much skewer the entire music industry. At the same time, you're the guy who plays the Super Bowl <laughs> and has sold millions of records. Do you think of yourself as an underdog? An underdog? No, I don't think I'm an underdog. I think I, I would be really, you know, wrong to think of myself as an underdog. I should be happy for what's happened. But I think there were times when I felt that way. You know, there were times when I really had to work and hustle. I never felt like I've gotten a huge promo from the music business. I don't think they ever helped me up and made things easy for me. Uh, it's my audience is is what's made me survive. Honestly, it's the it's actually the people <laughs> mm. that we play to and that buy the records that have made us a sort of contradiction. Because God knows, I mean, we've done the least. I mean, the bare minimum of promotion in our life. <laughs> we've never been really good at going out and playing the promo game. When we come back, the inside story on one of Tom Petty's most famous tracks. It irked me no end that I had to do this. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers have always charted their own course. This is, after all, the guy that drove from Florida to California as a teenager with his friends and a few demo tracks because they believed they were worthy of a record contract. They'd be the first to admit they seldom backed down, but the one time they did ended in a big surprise. They were in the process of switching record labels. It was the late 1980s. And the old label was going to release a greatest hits album which I wasn't really keen on, but it was a contractual obligation. And part of this obligation was that I had to deliver a new song to go along with this album. And it irked me no end mm. that I had to do this, you know, because I, I was trying to write for Wildflowers. I didn't want to turn around and give something away. And I kind of hate it when you get those greatest hits albums and there's, there's all hits and then, what's that, you know, <laughs> at the end? There's like, well, what's that on there for, you know? It's, I hate that. Why is there a live track all of a sudden? Like, I don't get it. But The bonus that they're giving, they're the, offering. There is no bonus track. It's the end of your record, man. There is no bonus, you know? I don't buy that. I don't want it on my record unless it's supposed to be there. But this is why people find me difficult sometimes, but it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> right. Let's dance with Mary Jane One more time to kill the pain And that song he had to write? Mary Jane's Last Dance. I feel so good creeping in and I'm tired of this town again. And in the end of the day, it was, you know, one of our biggest songs. Mm. But it was, wouldn't have been done if it just, if we hadn't absolutely had to make a record to fill out this album. In the moment of creation, if you will, um, know if something's, when you're writing Free Fallen, do you, do, do you know in your bones? You kind of go, man, this is a, this is a big song. I, I knew that was a good one because I played it all night when I went home. I just kept, you know, I rarely play myself. And I went home and I just kept playing that track. One of the things that occurs to me now that you do have all these hits over the years is that fans want to hear them. And you've talked before, Tom, about not wanting to just be a jukebox and, uh, or I suppose a nostalgia act of just getting up there and, and playing the hits. Uh, and you've got this killer new record, which would make sense that you'd, you'd want to be playing. At the same time, people are paying a lot of money to see you. How do you navigate those waters between whether you're going to play the back catalog or not? It's a constant challenge. Uh, 
I mean, it, it's a funny kind of burden <laughs> because you're so happy that you, you've had that many successful songs. And it's only natural that a large part of the audience wants to hear those songs because some of them are their favorite songs or they wouldn't have come. Yeah. You still, though, if you only do that, you're, you're going to become bored and kind of a parody of yourself. So that is a, a scary thing to me, you know, especially going into my 60s and I still feel like I have stuff to say and records that I, I want people to be aware of. <laughs> You might say that's what the new album Hypnotic Eye is all about, the voice Tom Petty still has, 11 songs that took four years to write. Only one single from Hypnotic Eye has been reviewed so far, American Dream Plan B. American Songwriter magazine calls it a burly gem of a song, but Tom Petty has always been about the whole record and continues to stake his reputation on that. You know, if I'm not making good ones, there's really no reason to buy another Tom Petty record. You've got you know, it's quite a few already. After nearly 40 years of making popular and relevant music, there is little question around Tom Petty's contribution to modern musicology. Yet for some reason, that hasn't always elevated Petty into the same rarefied air inhabited by his contemporaries. Seminal artists who respect him. You, you don't always get mentioned when people are talking about some of your iconic contemporaries like Bob Dylan or Neil Young or Paul Simon as being one of these legendary songwriters. Does that bother you? No, I haven't had time to be bothered. <laughs> I'm busy. Um, I'd love to be in the conversation, but I don't see myself as Bob Dylan. You know, who the hell's Bob Dylan? You know, that's you know, I mean, Shakespeare pales in comparison to Bob Dylan in my book. I'm doing the best I can, you know. I, I, you can't say I didn't try really hard, because I'm trying really hard to be good. Tom Petty, it's been a, an utter pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much Very for nice. this. Very nice. Yeah. I'm Gian Gomeshi in Malibu, California.